I have four of these that I have put together from the final castings. I spent three days putting these four casting kits together. And I was using what I would say were the worst of the castings that I had. Worst in the sense sometimes the mold would not properly align and I'd get a bit of a misalignment mark on it or a seam. Once I filled that offset with epoxy sculpt and used my number 11 scraper to reshape it, when these are painted, you will not be able to tell there was ever any defects or anything in them. And very easy to do. The resin and epoxy sculpt are easy to scrape and sand. Just to give you an idea of some of the issues that I worked with on these that far exceed anything that you would expect to see. I had a misalignment on the body mold. There was a bit of a step right here. I filled that with epoxy sculpt and used that number 11 scraper I've shown you previously to scrape the resin down and the epoxy sculpt and sand that smooth. I don't know what was wrong with me. I drilled a hole through three of these arms, so I fixed that with epoxy sculpt. That worked well. This is a head that I believe was not pressure cast. I don't remember the reason, but it had some bubbles in the hair and on the tips of the bow. I fixed that with epoxy sculpt and put some of that glazing putty in the hair, scraped and sanded that. That took care of those problems. On this arm, I had a little scratch there I had to fill. There's some, some misalignment in this arm. And I scraped that down and sanded it, and some of these little bubbles would show up. There's no way I can tell what castings are going to have bubbles under the surface. Both arms had the casting sprues back here. And one advantage of having the casting sprues in that back here is that that's not going to be seen from the front of the organ that's back on the back side. So I filled those with glazing putty. And after you get through shaping your pieces and you're happy with them, I recommend that you sand every square inch of this very lightly to remove the glaze and to give tooth to your paint. Just be careful not to sand off the detail. This one had a couple of bubbles in the bow and I fixed that again with epoxy sculpt. A few bubbles in the back of the arms on this one. Repaired a little issue with misalignment on the pocket there. And that's about all for that one. This one was another one that had misalignment on the body. And I used the epoxy sculpt. A few bubbles in the back of the arms. And that's about it. One advantage of having the flesh tone throughout the resin for the head is that you're going to have a mold mark through here and in the hair. I can scrape that down with a number 11 scraper and sand it a little bit and that is exactly the same color as that. Same way with the back of the hand there might be a slight little mold mark in here and that's easy to fix. And with the flesh tone in there you don't have to paint the skin for the hands, neck, or face. Everything else will get painted. I have said several times that the holes for these support shafts have to be square or perpendicular in both directions to this surface. If you do drill one that's slightly misaligned, and, and I did, I had one that I messed up, I just mixed up some epoxy sculpt a bit on the thin side and shoved it in that hole from the inside of the box. Used a piece of piano wire to push back on that made sure that hole was full and left that dimple on the outside. Let that epoxy sculpt cure overnight, redrilled the hole, and that took care of the problem. One last final thing, I would take a stainless brush. You can buy these brushes at Harbor Freight in different places. They're, they're relatively inexpensive. You can get brass, you can get nylon, you can get stainless steel. I would not use the brass. The brass has a little tarnish to it and it will make the resin look dirty. I'm going to lightly, key word here is lightly, go over areas that I cannot sand and go in between here where some of the details are. Very lightly, I want to remove the shine. It's putting little micro scratches in the resin. That'll give tooth to your paint. Here around the pocket where you can't sand it, just go over that lightly. 
down here on the shoes and the creases and the coat around these buttons and the ruffles on the sleeve just go around that there's no reason to do the hand the face or the neck because they're not going to be painted do the same thing around here on the head we don't have to do the face or the neck but I want to do the wig the hair If you look at this under a magnifying glass, you'll see that you've removed the shine. And just do the whole thing. Your best chance of having your paint stick, you need to get a little tooth, a little texture, a little roughness to the surface so your paint will bond with the surface. And after you get done doing all of this and you're through and you're ready to start painting, I would wash these with soap and water and a vegetable brush again and rinse them real good and let them dry. You've added oil net from your hands and handling this thing. Just give it a good wash, let it dry before you start painting. All that remains is to put the control rods on these axle collars and I've shown you how to do that you should have a very good idea of the quality of these castings and how easy this material is to work with. I don't intend to post any more videos on these unless I get a couple of them painted or certainly when I get one working on the front of my second Senior 20.